Good afternoon, welcome back to the channel. Cliff Jumper here, AKA Brendan, whichever you prefer, whatever. Today we are finally getting back to the Corrado project because we have something very important that goes right about here. So stick with us as we restore life to the supercharged VR6 Corrado. All right, yeah, as we mentioned, we have something very important that will go in the engine bay right here. Uh, if you were watching a while ago, you might remember that had an incident and a very important little part broke. Well, my friend Valentino, thank you Valentino, came to the rescue. He is a machinist and he was able to help us out with a part. So a little backstory, this, this is the thing that broke. You can see this is in two pieces. This is the very important, completely proprietary supercharger tensioner bolt, which had previously been repaired. You see the, the Gila coil here, uh, the threads in it. It's basically a bolt that has a hole that's threaded. So it's tapped and threaded and it, it works the tensioner pulley for the supercharger system. And it had stripped so, a friend had drilled it, tapped it, and put the Gila coil in so that we could keep using it. But you can see from the, uh, the carnage here, not a whole lot of meat left on the corner of this bolt on either side after it's been threaded. And it was just really not a great design. So anyway, that broke, leaving us stranded and um, had to find another one. So fortunately, off in Germany, the original company, let me, let me rewind here. Little supercharger history for this supercharger. So in the late 90s, a company called Zurich Engineering in Germany designed this supercharger. Very simple, it's a centrifugal type supercharger, similar to a Vortec, but a Vortec uses a planetary gear set to spin the impeller really fast. The Zurich charger, operates on a very simple pulley principle. It's just got two pulleys and one spins, one gets spun by your, your regular accessory belt and that spins a direct drive to the supercharger here. So it's just a very simple pulley ratio system that spins the impeller and that is supposed to be the pinnacle of what makes it a very reliable charger. Now, another company here in the US that many people in the VR6 scene may know, VF Engineering, decided to import the supercharger in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s. So this is actually a VF Engineering supercharger. It's the Z Engineering charger rebadged by VF and sold for the VR6s. So, uh, Nick Saran, the owner of VF. We've got a great relationship through the R32 Owners Club. We go way <laughs> to almost 20 years back now. And he was kind enough to do some research. He could look up the serial number on this one. He was able to tell me exactly when it was brought here to the US and what, when it was sold and gave me a history and uh, it's been serviced. So it's, it's a great little unit for period correctness for the Corrado, excuse the horrible dirt situation here. But they do not stock the parts like this proprietary little tensioner bolt. So in the meantime, Zurich Engineering, AKA Z Engineering was sold to a little tuner company called Roof, who tunes mostly 911s. They're really well known for the 911 Roof but they also do VR6s. So happy day, They somebody there really likes the VR6 and they currently sell this charger for both the old 12 valve and the newer 24 valve. So if I wanted to, I could get one of these and throw it on the R32. You can leave me a comment if I should or not, but anyway. So I reached out to them, they had the pulley. Well, actually no, I take it back. They referred me to someone who stocks the parts individually that I could buy the pulley bolt for. So I reached out to get a hold of them and they said, yes, we do in fact have the bolt. So I ordered it 
and a measly eight weeks later, it showed up through customs because international mail, gotta love that. But it was missing a very important thing and that is this hole that goes all the way through it that has threads that go through it, which allow it to be um, tensioned on the, the system. So you can see it's a lot more robust than the old design, I like that. And it seems to be higher quality steel, but didn't have the hole. So when I reached back out to them, they said, yeah, just send it back to us, we'll send you another one. I didn't really wanna wait 16 weeks. So I reached out to my friend Valentino and he said, yeah, I think I can work with that. So he took it to his machine shop, they machined it, threaded it, did a little bit of extra mill work on it to make sure that it was gonna fit perfectly just the way that um, Old and Busted here did. I've test fitted it already. It's good to go. We are gonna install it and restore life to the VR6 Corrado. So here we go. These are all the things that work together to make the pulley work. Here's the actual pulley, various washers and spacers and things that sit on it. So, and this is the actual tensioner bolt itself, which allows this to be adjusted. So the first thing we have to do is get the tensioner bolt mounted back there. So there's the actual, this bolt kind of sticks through from this orientation, like so, comes into a slot. And then this is going to be threaded from the front of this bracket in through a hole and thread into this. Once we have that, that's really the hard part then we can add the the pulley and get that on there get the belt on it and start to get the tension correct any ideas okay so we got that bolt in place and now i need to get this one in there's no good camera angle for this i apologize but i'm just gonna do what we can with this so the thing is i gotta hand thread it to get it started blind after it's hand threaded then or at least after it's like you know all the way in the hole to do its thing i think i got it started feels promising. I'm going to take my hand out for a second, rest it, it's cramping. After I get it started, then the next step is a simple 10 millimeter ratchet to tighten it all the way down and, and get it roughly in place. And then this I think is a 15 millimeter, might be a 16 millimeter that goes on to secure the pulley in place. Now the deal is you use the long, thin 10 millimeter bolt to get your, your tension right. And then you tighten this down all the way and it kind of locks it in place against the bracket to make sure that it, it is not gonna um, come loose. And the tolerances are very, very tight. So I'm gonna make sure that I've got the right side on and uh, it's a good thing that I just take, took a quick peek at this because I don't think I did. I 
think is threading. Yes, it's threading. Really nicely. Good job, Valentino, and your team. I know he had some friends helping him out there at the machine shop too, but uh, anyway, appreciate your work. Five minutes later. Down in here is the supercharger bracket. I had to thread through the one main bolt and then the secondary bolt threads through it. That will allow me to move it, slide it back and forth on the bracket, which applies tension to the pulley and the, the belt and all that. So I'm just threading it by hand to get it started. Once I have it to uh, a reasonable point there, then we are going to put the pulley on it. I guess we're at that point now. It seems pretty happy. So now the pulley's gonna go on with this longer washer piece facing the bracket so that it clears the bracket. Once it's on, then I have to put on two more washers and the locking bolt. So little fiddly getting this in there and on, but we've done it before. So I know we can do it again. All right, we've got it on. Successful pulley. Um, <laughs> let me get this. There we go. See the pulley is successfully on the bolt right down there. So making some good progress. That was way, way easier. Now very delicately, I need to get this on there without losing <laughs> either of the other washers that I've already successfully gotten in place. So let's see. I may want to try this with a magnet, I think. Yep. I'm going to try this with a magnet, lowering it down into place and then spinning it with my other hand. Let's work smarter, not harder here. Okay, so new plan. I'm going to use the magnet with the bolt on it, get it inserted and stuck on the shaft of the pulley down there. And then I will, with my other hand, very deftly start to thread it by hand. And then once it's started, then I will use the ratchet wrench to tighten it. Twenty minutes later. Okay, so lesson learned in mixing and matching 20-year-old parts. Here are the here's the original outer race for the bearing. Here's the new one. It's a lot thicker. Interesting. Here is the original inner race, and here is the new inner race. Now, the, the center section doesn't matter a whole lot, but when I compare these, you can see that the new one is a lot shorter than the old one. This one provides more clearance from the bracket, so we're going to go with this one. And interesting enough, because it has this big, thick center section, it has to work with the old one that's got the very thin cross section because otherwise, if I try to mix and match these, they're gonna to be too long and protrude past the edge of the bearing. So, taking the old one, insert that in the bearing. You see it like comes right up to the edge there. If I try the new one, it is just gonna stick out all funky and it's not gonna be on center and balanced. It's gonna be eccentric. So. Here, the old pieces are gonna do the bit here. And we will hang on to these because they're shiny.
Okay, threads are started. Now I'm gonna wanna move that back. And of course I need to fish out the um, belt and get it back in place on the pulley. So pulley needs to go all the way back. And double check, make sure it is actually sitting. All the ribs in place on all the places we want ribs. Okay, that's that's good. Now I'm gonna start tightening that. It's not gonna be tightened all the way, but I'm gonna tighten that bolt. So we can properly tension the actual tension bolt now. So the, um, yeah, one more double check. Yes, indeed. Ribs are all ribbing <laughs> where they need to rib. So we're going to start tightening this bolt. And it's that bolt that's right down there. That is our tensioner bolt. So that's gonna slide the pulley forward and put tension on the belt. When you get the adjusting bolt adjusted, then we tighten down the main bolt to keep the pulley from wandering on the bracket. Tension specs for the supercharger bolt on this are <laughs> as follows. Make it tight and you should be able to twist the main belt about 45 degrees. So that's about what we have right now. You don't need Kung Fu Voodoo Monkey Death Grip tightness on this, just tight. It does have a lock nut and those lock washers. So that should be good. And let's do a very quick test to see if we have bad noises when we fire it up. Okay, no horrible noises. That's that's good. It's running. This is also good. I don't have any coolant in the system since uh, we, we lost it all when we were working on it earlier. So I'm not gonna let it run all the way up to temperature because there's nothing circulating here. But just a quick check, make sure it is supercharging. There's a little bit of belt squeak, so I am going to tighten it some more. Yeah, if you could hear that, that high pitched, there was just a little bit of squeak, which we definitely don't want. So it means it's just a little on the loose size, side. So we'll loosen up the main pulley bolt again. And this is one of those definitely, it's a trial and error kind of thing where there's no perfect spec for it. You just gotta, you know, kind of feel it. So get it loose enough that we can move that pulley. Let's get down there and tighten the temperature, ten yeah, tensioner a bit more. So every one of these is about a quarter. So 20 minutes later. So I am running out of daylight. I don't know how much more I will film tonight, but my plan is I'm going to head over, pick up some 
proper European spec coolant, top her off and let her run up to temperature. And yeah, she's kind of dirty. She's been sitting a while and there's, it's, yeah, there's just some gross, gross stuff happening. Rain has happened. So we're gonna, we're gonna clean her up. Tomorrow there is a vintage Euro gathering and maybe we'll take a shakedown cruise in her. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. But there's a lot of cleaning that needs to happen in addition to some testing just to make sure that everything is copacetic. But I'm pretty sure it is because it looks good, sounds good, everything's running. So yes, thanks for tuning in. I will check back with a little bit more report before I end this video, just some, some road footage. And in case things go horribly catastrophically wrong, I'll, yeah, we'll, we'll film that too. But hopefully we're headed for success. New day and new eyes on the Corrado. So yeah, just uh, some follow up. All this is working great. However, when we started it up and let it start to run to temperature, I noticed there's a lot of coolant leaking right around the plastic factory thermostat and sensor flange housings down there. So those are toast and we are gonna need to replace those before we get the Corrado back up and running. And it's probably time for some coolant flush too because see here that color is pretty nasty so yeah I don't remember the last time I actually flushed the coolant in this well no I take that back when the car had only a hundred eighty thousand miles on it it had a head gasket blow and we did cams, we did a port and polished head, we did a whole bunch of stuff in addition to the Mark IV metal head gasket, which raised the compression slightly, gave us a little bit more oomph. We did a bunch of upgrades at that point in time. So that, that was 180,000 miles. She's got 208,000 miles. So about, yeah, almost 30,000 miles ago. That was the last time we flushed the coolant. So this coolant, by mileage isn't that old, but by age, it's about a decade old and it's time. So we're gonna do a, a flush. We're gonna get, I'm gonna get a couple bottles of the coolant flush stuff. I'll run it through, let it warm up, let stuff leak out because it's gonna leak out because of those leaky flanges. And then um, I'll flush it a couple of times, then we will change these housings. Or the housing change might happen in the middle of the flush because I do want to remove the thermostat as part of the flushing procedure just to make sure that everything's getting out of the head. And then with the new flanges back on, we will fill it up with fresh G13 and we should be good to go at that point. Unfortunately, that means that even though the supercharger is now working again, we can't drive her just yet. So one step forward, two steps back, such is the nature of Corrado ownership, but she will rise again. This is not a giant problem. So tune in as I deal with the coolant flushing and changing out these housings. I do have the metal housings made by, I think they're Autobahn Auto Works and we will be popping those on there. And that should buy us a good amount of time without them warping and causing issues. So yeah, tune back in, see you again sometime soon. Make sure you hit like, subscribe and share. Appreciate that, God bless you. See you soon, bye-bye. And on that terrible disappointment, <laughs> it's time to say goodbye, we'll be back.